In this tutorial, I want to show you how to write efficient programs for your FPGA. In the next video, I will show you why the language VHDP is easier to use than older languages like VHDL or Verilog. But now, I show you what traditional FPGA programming looks like. I first create a new VHDP project that automatically creates some demo code. There you already have an LED we can use and a process. I just quickly delete the thread inside because this is something for the next video. The process is where you usually write the most of your code. You can use something like an if for loops or you can set your signals like with other programming languages. But the big difference is that there is no processor that runs through the code step by step, but everything is implemented in hardware. So in the VHDP language, the whole code inside the process is executed every clock cycle. Let's see how this affects our code we must write. For a blinking LED, we cannot use a delay because we cannot wait some milliseconds when the whole code must be executed in a few nanoseconds. So we have to count the clock cycles and with that we see when to turn the LED on or off. With a 12 MHz clock of the FPGA, we count to 3 million for a quarter second. I therefore create an integer from 0 to 3 million. This counter is then incremented every cycle like that. Now we just must check every cycle if we hit 3 million, so I can set the counter to 0 and change the state of the LED. For this I have to change to type out to buffer so I can also read the state of the LED. Because I used a variable in this case, the value changes instantly. So when the value is 1 before 3 million, the variable is incremented to 3 million and in the if statement set back to 0. But when you use this value also outside of this process, you need a signal. It's important to know that this value is then only changed after the code in the process is executed. So the signal is incremented to 3 million, but for the if statement, it is still 1 before 3 million, and in the next cycle it would be incremented again. I can fix this by either setting a signal to the value of the variable every cycle. I could set the value to 1 before 3 million to set the value to 0, or I could check the value before incrementing. We could do the same with a case statement. Here we put the signal or variable we want to check on the top and then must select for which values something should happen. In this case, we add a when for the value 3 million and we just do nothing for every other value. You do that by using others as value and null as operation. You maybe also think we can count to 3 million in a for or while loop. This would look like this for the for loop and like this for the while loop. But if you remember, everything is executed in one cycle. The FPGA would increment the variable 3 million times in one cycle and therefore we just use a ton of logic elements to change the LED state every clock cycle. Now, you maybe don't want to run the code every clock cycle. Add an asynchronous reset or use a different clock. Let's see how this works. I half the clock frequency like that. Then I use this as clock for a new process. And I can select if I want to trigger on the rising or falling edge. For an asynchronous reset, I add an input and then just change the if statement like this. When you don't want to use a clock, you can also do it like this. This then triggers every time a value of a signal inside the process changes. This was just a rough overview. In the video description, you find several links to the documentation that is related to this. And you find the link to the example code written in VHDP.